Okay, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, it's been a while since I've made one, and that's because I've been uh, doing a lot of learning myself. Um, I'm taking courses in Blender, uh, Unity, uh, After Effects, and um, and getting back into some digital painting as well. So I've sort of taken a break from making these tutorials for a while, but uh, now I'm going to start it on them again and hopefully got some good stuff to share with you guys. So. Uh, today, uh, I just want to show what a great resource Krita is for Blender. So, uh, what we're going to look at is painting directly onto our 3D models. Um, so, I've just made a fairly simple model here, just modified the default um, box shape. And, uh, and yeah, so now what I'm going to do is uh, put out its UV map. So. Um, hit U, Smart UV Project, and say OK. And have to make sure you're still in edit mode here, uh, because if you're not, you don't get this UVs option right here. So open that up, and what I'm going to do is export UV layout. So just going to export or just going to have it overwrite an existing file, and we can see the UV map is right there. And now we're going to over to Krita, open up the UV map, and um, and so I want to show why Krita is so good at this, um, and why it's probably uh, better than, uh, for instance, Photoshop. Uh, I tried this with an older version of Photoshop, and uh, it doesn't work. So this is what I'm going to do: just use the bucket tool, click on one of the shapes that we know makes up the UV and see how it fills in um, almost all of them. So I'm just going to grab the other pieces there and there and uh, essentially I've just added a base color to the UV map. So I'm going to save that, go back to Blender, uh, give this shape a material, just a diffuse node, go over to the node editor Luckily, it starts out zoomed really, really far away, which is super helpful. And uh, now I'm just going to add it as an image texture. That UV map that I just saved over right there is going to be my image texture that I connect to the diffuse. And so now let's just render the object. Okay, it's got that basic blue color, and it's got these these lines here, which is because back in Krita, uh, there's still some transparency there. The lines aren't colored in, so I'm going to paint bucket a few more times. Fill those in. Okay, I hit save now. Go back to Blender, and it updates to show that uh, those lines aren't aren't a problem anymore. So, uh, what we can do now is um, right-click the layer put in a, a clipping group and so this puts a mask layer above so this lets you paint right over top of the colored in areas without touching any of the transparent areas that essentially aren't a part of the UV map so got uh, tons of wonderful brushes inside of Krita here's just a watercolor brush I'll just make some marks across the page or across the the base texture I hit save and this is great because all it asks me is, okay, what's what's the quality you want to save at? It's still a PNG. So normally, um, PNGs, to my knowledge, they can't have multiple layers. But Krita doesn't get picky about that. It doesn't tell you you have to save as a different file type. It doesn't get you to um, flatten all your layers. You can keep them open. And as long as you don't close the file, you can continue to work with a multi-layer PNG file. And so now we update our render. And we just got those little marks that we painted across there. So we can go back, uh, hit insert to add another layer, make sure it's a mask layer, and then do some other, add in a bit of yellow there. And OK. Go back to Blender. And there, so you can see you can you can paint whatever you want. Um, 
you have plenty of time you can uh, get get nice and uh, technical but also uh, if you've got uh, existing textures that you like to use like I really love this metal texture here I can copy and paste that uh, I have to set it so it's a clipping and um, hit save okay go back to blender now I've got a scratched metal object there um, add some texture I don't have a ton of uh, I've just got the uh, 12 render samples and no denoising on this so it's not coming out amazing but uh, it's coming out good enough so um, yeah so I, I'm just gonna play around a little bit more with that so let's uh, let's close out of our metal scratched find some other cool textures we can play with really heavily focused on um, creating a work pipeline that uses as many free materials uh, as possible so let's say I like some of this. I'm actually uh, drop the size of this down because it doesn't need to be that huge. Just go to 1024, and um, and maybe we just want a piece of this to copy and paste, and let's move it around a bit and let's resize it. Over there. Uh, Crit has got this wonderful uh, uh, gradient erase option. So you turn on gradient with G, hit E to erase, and you can now use a gradient to gradually smooth something into your image. Now I don't know if that's going to show or not with our current camera angle, so I'm just going to duplicate it one more time. Okay, hit save. There it is. It's on that side of the box. And it's a little bit didn't blend quite as as well as I would have liked. So, we go back to Krita and we uh play a bit more with the blending options. Um merge this with the layer below. Drop down the opacity a bit. And also even on this scratched metal layer, I'm going to drop down the opacity just a touch. Some of our old work starts to come through. Render it. And that that's at least for the uh, purpose of this tutorial. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. So um, now that I've got something that I like, I'm just going to delete this diffuse BSDF, add in a uh, principled, lots more options that way and then actually make it a metallic image. Uh, bump down the roughness just a bit and um, see how that renders. Okay, so we're getting some of the metallic shine there, so that's cool. And uh, yeah, so if you bear with me just for a second, I'm going to bump up the render samples and turn on denoising. And let's see what we get. Have another sip of beer while this is going. Yeah. So that's decent and uh, pretty, pretty quick and easy to do. Um, again, you can experiment more, start adding in some bump maps, things like that, and uh, lots of creative stuff you can come up with so uh, I hope that was helpful I hope that it's not another year before my next tutorial and in fact I promise it won't be and uh, yeah thanks for watching <laughs>